this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy Tactics! Before heading after Delita, we can do these little side quests here called Propositions. They're nude to chapter 2. You go to a bar, and you can pick up a little side quest here. So let's check it out. Uh, now these propositions, they really don't have any impact on the plot or the backstory. You don't get any equipment out of it. So if you don't want to do them, you don't have to. They're not really that critical at all. And this is what I meant during the intro when I said, do you want me to do all the side quests? I, I really should have said propositions because I mean, I am going to do all the side quests, recruit all the characters and everything like that, or at least in the original version of the game, obviously not the PSP version, but anyway, the way propositions work, you go to a bar, you pick it up, you say, sure, I'll do that. Sometimes you need some amount of money in order to uh, get the info on the job. You can choose three generic units to send on to the proposition, and then choose however many days you want. I like choosing an even number of days. So let's do that, and now we just gotta wait 12 days. So the easiest way of doing a proposition is finding two nodes on the map that uh, are right next to each other where you cannot get into a random battle, like here. Or there's also the two nodes by uh, Egros Castle and uh, wherever we ended chapter one, Fort Zeekton there. So you could use those two as well. Just basically go back and forth over and over again, wait the 12 days, go back to the bar, and see how the job or the proposition worked out. I'll be honest, I do not know a whole lot about propositions. I know how to do them and how to get what I want out of them, but I'm not like an expert hacker or anything like that. So I, I just know how to make them functional. But anyway, you come back, you report the job, and most likely you will succeed in the proposition. I've heard that you can fail in a proposition, but I never have. So, I don't know, viewers. You got me on that one. I, I have a general idea of what might affect the success rate of a proposition might be. Like, the job classes you use, or uh, the number of days you go on there. Uh, maybe the jobs affect how much gill or how much JP you get out of it. I don't know. I mean, there's people who probably know more about this than I do. But basically, the whole point of doing this is to... Uh, gain JP in a job class without having to actually use that job class in battle. Like, let's say Time Mage, because I want to actually use Wizard for their magic attack during battle. So this way I can learn some other abilities. That's how I learned the abilities that I listed in the video description of the previous episode. So, there you go. And sometimes when you do a proposition, you'll get, you'll discover a new land or some exploration thing or whatever. You might get a key item or a treasure. You just go to uh, Brave Story here, and, uh, okay, I don't have any yet, but they might list it there. So, that's something you can do. I'm not really going to go over that in great detail. If you really care for me to do every single proposition, okay, let me know. But, honestly, most of the backstory, eh, not that interesting to me. So, oh well. But they are good for the JP, so I'm just loading up my save file here after doing all those propositions and all my shopping here. And yeah, let me see, I got a moment here. Uh, yeah, you see here, I uh, from one of the propositions, I got a treasure here. Usual, sometimes they have references to other Final Fantasy games, whatever, I, yeah, it's nothing that interesting to me. So, let's move along then, shall we? Seems like a forest would be a bad place to go through with your hostage get attacked by monsters okay so first things first uh let's see let's go let's go like that yeah that ought to do it. and i got some new abilities for my characters too uh most notably i got wave fist and chakra for my monk and i also got teleport for my wizard from the time mage dab class so let's put those to use now I'll go over how the mechanics of those abilities work when they become pertinent. Oh, I didn't know they played this music for this battle. I forgot. Well, I guess it's a good thing I didn't uh, demonstrate a random battle with this song, because I thought I would have to. So, well, there you go. I guess I don't have to demonstrate this song. I think there's only one more song 
that plays during random battles that I haven't demonstrated. I think it's called a chapel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, pretty stupid chocobo. Let's just, uh, let's get out of here. Or should we rescue him? Chocobo says yes! Yeah, that could be. Chocobos have really good range. Uh, what you can do with chocobos, if you have a chocobo in your party, you recruit a monster, like with a mediator job class or something, you can hop onto it. I think you move onto the chocobo or something. Uh, I haven't done it in so long. But if you do that, uh, then it increases your effective range. So, eh, I, I, I usually don't use monsters really in, in this game. So too much effort in my opinion. But, oh well. So we got a whole bunch of goblins here. Obviously, they're all weak to ice. Well, of course. So, yeah, we're going to take them out. I think, uh, did I get a Brave Boost? Oh, somehow I thought I got a Brave Boost from that. Well, whatever. But anyway, I do want to go after one of these goblins. So, let's see. If I do... Okay, yeah, I can do this. If I move over here... Then I can use my new ability, Wave Fist. It has a range of three, and it's basically a long-range physical attack. So that's pretty nice. So let's give it a try. It's uh, free of charge, so you don't have to uh, expend MP or anything like that. So yeah, it's a really good, relatively cheap ability for a monk early on. So that way, your monk can do something right on the get-go. Or right out of the get-go. Whatever. Hey, Grass, why don't you actually move towards the enemies? How long will it take me to charge up my haste? Oh, good, they can move. Okay, let's see if I can move everyone into it. No, I can't. Okay, well, whatever. Let's see, I'll put my haste right there. One, two, three. That ought to do. Now, when you teleport, you can teleport anywhere you want on the battlefield. The problem is that the farther away you go from where you are, the less likely it will succeed. Uh, to my knowledge, the way it works is if you move within whatever your base movement range is, in this case three, as long as I don't move more than three tiles away or jump more than three, I'll be fine. I won't uh, fail to teleport. If you fail, you just stay right where you are, that's all. And I, from what I heard, I think if you move, for every one tile you move beyond your base range, uh, yeah, for every tile you move, uh, it reduces its accuracy by 10% from what I heard, or something like that. So, in my experience, if you move, like, five tiles, you should be fine. You have, like, an 80% success rate, and you'll usually succeed there. The other nice thing about teleport is that it ignores any obstacles that are in your way. So you can go through walls. That's... Yeah, you can go through walls. You can, uh, if you're surrounded by enemies, you can just teleport right past them. So it's really nice, just n not even for the additional uh, movement range, just for the ability to get around obstacles and things like that. So, I've never noticed teleport failing on me because of height restrictions, but I would think theoretically it should. Possibly, but, well, whatever. Uh, let's see. Let's have Ramza finish that goblin off. I'll start working on these bad boys. One, two, three. Yeah, let's stay in the back here because uh, I have to save the chocobo. If the chocobo dies, game over. So, yeah. Oh, and the chocobo's name is Boko. A bunch of people were pointing out that during the regriff battle, yeah, the Tokyo there was named Bobo too. Now, anyway, here we got a goblin. Let's go two tiles away. The nice thing about the Lancer job class is that with your lance, you have additional range, so you can hit an enemy from up. Excuse me. You can hit an enemy from up to two tiles away, so you don't have to worry about them counterattacking like most enemies would. Now, anyway, I could have sent Otaku on the right side, but my Monk and Lancer are doing pretty good by themselves. I wouldn't really worry about using Jump with a Lancer, because with its base ability, you have to be, like, right next to the enemy in order for it to work. If you want to increase the range of your Jump, 
you have to learn various abilities in order to make it work, and I just don't really feel that that's worth it at all. So I'm just going to, oh, um, yeah, I was going to go after this guy, but uh, let's go after this guy. See, uh, the nice thing about jump is that it, it, uh, it ignores evade, so that could be, well, very helpful later in the game when enemies start getting a lot more evade, and I can't get my ice spell to go through quickly enough. Nice! Whoa, whoa. Uh, stay still. There you go. Can I get one of my time magic spells? Okay, well. Nah. Well, I'll do what I can with myself and go from there. How's that sound? And just do whatever. Try to gain a little JP. Really, with my mages, I've pretty much learned most of what I care for them by now. With the propositions, I'm going to be using them to learn, well, let's say for Otaku, I'm going to be learning, like, Time Mage and Summoner abilities. With my White Mage, I've already learned all the Oracle abilities that I really care about. Really, I'm not going to do that much with my White Mage. Or my Priest. Whatever. You know their names. Because, yeah, eventually... It gets to the point, as you're already starting to see with my Lancer and Monk there, but even more so, it eventually gets to the point where it's like, why bother using crowd control when I can just kill the enemy outright? So, I mean, it is nice that crowd control actually does work. Can I hit the guy from here? Probably not. But... Oh, I can. All right. Ha! Yeah, not bad on the damage there. Why don't you use Choco Cure on yourself? Uh, yeah, the enemies are spreading themselves out now. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, Gary, I can finish that one off. Let's go after the newcomer. So let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is going to be beyond my normal movement range. But, yeah, you see, that's how, how it works. There. So, here, not so useful. But I've got it on just to... Oh. That won't kill me. That will. There we go. That's more like it. As far as the wizard spells go, I wouldn't worry too much about learning level 3 or level 4 elemental spells. Really, as far as, the sp as those go, uh, I think the summons are better than the level 3 elemental spells. Like Ifrit, Ramu, things like that. Now, nothing I can do over here. Now, let's demonstrate Chakra. Why not? Here's how it works. You use it, and it affects you and anyone else on the exact same height as you. So, let's put that to use. It restores HP and MP. So, yeah, it is really, really good. You'll never run out of MP with Chakra going on. But yeah, anyway, uh, with the other wizard spells, like, uh, well, eventually I would like to learn uh, Flare, but uh, from one thing I heard, I've never tried this myself, I heard the level 4 elemental spells can be learned like the blue magic spells in Final Fantasy V, or well, the, any of the other Final Fantasy games. Like, if you use Ice 4 on a wizard and you survive the spell, then you'll learn it actually so you don't have to get all the jp for it so i've seen some enemies do that later in the game but i've never actually done it myself the problem with bigger spells is that they just take too long to uh work so i'm more concerned about speed than actual raw power in general which is one reason why i really like the psp version of final fantasy 4 and all those games they but they really I mean, they didn't really change too much with the game, but I love how they how important speed is in the game now. It just seems like it's so much more important. It makes so much bigger of an impact. Haste is actually remotely useful. Yay! So that was one thing that I really liked about that version of the game. Nuts, I'm out of range. Again. Can I chakra you? 
Nope, he's on a different height. Even half a height will be uh, too much. Or not enough. Whatever. You know what I mean. Oh, and by the way, I did finish uh, the After Years recently. It took me 76 hours to finish that whole thing. Holy cow. That was a long game. Awesome, but very long. Probably too long, but it was still fun. And I will be making a Let's Play of that sooner or later, just not in the near future, but I would like to someday. Probably a side LP. Now, that 76 hours, that includes uh, raiding all the challenge dungeons and maxing out all my character levels at uh, in the level caps that they had for the previous dungeon. So, you know, probably if I went through it faster, it wouldn't have uh, taken me so long. So I'll certainly do things much more efficiently when I actually get around to it. Finish him! Punch him in the back with your knife fist! That didn't sound like a knife fist. I prefer Wark over Quack. That's just me. I don't know, what do you prefer, viewers? You're lucky, you're not next to him! What do you mean? You snore! Oh, I don't! You have bad breath! Alright, there we go. We get a high potion and more party members! Sure, why not? Can we get Coco in our party? Is that one of the random names that you can get for chocobos in the game? Coco? Please tell me that's not true. Oh, man. Coco. But how far has Delita made it with the princess? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy Tactics! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!